I will figure out what I've done wrong one day. Uh, so, a couple of things. So, um, there's a talk at 12. Uh, it's Hiroki Sayama from, it's hard to read that. At, uh, hey, how you doing? No, it's cool. Uh, Hiroki Sayama, who's at um, Binghamton, and they have a complex systems group there. So, um, how to make things evolve. So this is going to be kind of in the Josh Bongard world a little bit. Um, it's, you know, the real artificial life kind of characters. You know, so yeah, a life is a whole. You know, it's like kind of eighty style stuff still going along, and people are making things. And yeah, so he's he's a you know he's a he's a um, he's a great character. He's he goes to. Uh, every conference he goes to he's like a live tweeting machine you know he's like he's a really good sort of community human so anyway that's today at 12 and um, you could go to it too all right so i just wanted to mention this this is a terrible so when i had covid i watched i, I have these sort of memories of being sick in the past where i've watched terrible shows like really terrible shows i watched um heroes years ago when i had the flu for like a week and it was great the first season, and, but I didn't really know because I was in a stupor for like three days that it just like totally goes to pieces. It's sort of famous for being, you know, yeah. <laughs> Everyone was, yeah, right? They had this amazing first season, I guess, and I can't remember. I, you know. But um, anyway, this is the one I watched this time, but it was, uh, it's Medical Police, which I didn't know. Much. It's like very bad sort of like Top Gun, uh, sorry, Top Secret or... Um, you won't know these are from the eighties, but they're sort of, you know, joke, like stupid physical humor stuff. What's that? So it's, it comes out of children's hospital and it's so like, it's, you know, it's, it's like a mock thing. It's sort of, anyway, what, what, what I was amazed to find out though, is this is, this is like this 10 part thing. And these, you know, very ridiculous humans run around the world trying to stop a virus that's spreading, right? There's any number of shows about this, but it appeared in Netflix on Netflix in January, 2020 um you know not to great acclaim obviously but the big bad in all of it was the head of the cdc as it i'm not spoil you know but I'm like, <laughs> you know it doesn't help that we tell all these stories that that you know say there are government conspiracies i mean kind of came good at the end to be honest but um was basically happy for everyone to die in the world so it's like you know you wonder why i mean i don't know what's that <laughs> It's really awful. Yeah. Is it a Christian, a Christian sponsored? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so literally like the whole thing is like two people are like rebels in the society that don't wear masks and are Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Well, colliding those things together has been pretty powerful, right? Like, oh, yeah. Well, it's look, and, and this is something I've been thinking, I, you know, I've thought about it for a long time, but I just, I thought I should sort of say more. more. It's like stories, are, when you boil them down, they're kind of about, they're about survival, right? So, um, you know, and we discussed Russia, Ukraine quite a bit now, but, you know, the way that's being kind of put by various parties is, I mean, very clearly existential threat to Ukraine. Russia says it's not true at all. We're just like, you know, helping them out. And it's a threat, you know, the existential threat goes the other way. You know, you see that framing all the time. So like that, when you get, I mean, that's, you know, that's like, that's, you know, and the, re the replacement, is that what it's called? Right, the, 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 the idea that white people will be wiped out by um, people immigrating in and, and reproducing, right? So it's called the uh, like replacement, um, the Great Replacement, I think it's called. Yeah, that's right. The Great Replacement. Here it is. Yeah. So, Wikipedia. I mean, this is a really part of a series on us. I mean, Islam. It's everything really because it's about white nationalism. So, it's birth. You know, people look at birth rates. I mean, right. So, you know, you can start. So, this do the research and stuff. But that's the that is a gigantic, you know, survival thing. This is a survival of what you think is good, which is your, your, uh, you know, your, your race, of course, white people 
a tremendous record of being good people. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh, so, but just I just want you to sort of think of, think about that. I mean, it can get too far. You know, maybe it gets too carried away. I mean, there there are some funny, goofy stories around, but play fits into survival because it's um, you know, it's experimenting. It's kind of exploring stuff. It's that you know, things are going okay when you can play a bit, right? That's you, you, it's not so there's bear survival which ukraine is in now right for example um, but then there's things are going okay and you kind of you can mess around and play right so it still fits i think within a survival kind of framework but um yeah pride and prejudice you know jane austen's stories they're they're about you know finding a, a mate that has enough money if you're the woman and you know blah 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 and right so it is a it's a and the family name and all this sort of stuff. It's part of it's the hatchings, matchings, and dispatchings. It's the matchings part. Anyway, I just wanted to sort of point this because this is an amazing, well, it's not this one, it's the it's it's uh, the IMDB one. Just the timing and the story it told. Wow, you know. Um, but it was kind of amazing it was there then. So there's that. And um Oh yeah. So there was, as we mentioned, we're getting warmer here. This is a, this is a big scale kind of visualization. I, I mean, you we've seen many of these kinds of things, right? But this is, you've seen it. All right. So there's a, you know, I mean, I've, I've made these things myself a million times over, but it's, this is not bad. It's a little, it's going to take a minute, but, um, you know, you see what's going on. So there was a cooling through the middle of last century, right? And, and this is one of the, terms of stories and like scientists are idiots like that has held on to because there were scientists saying, well, maybe we should melt the, the polar caps. Right. I mean, which if the world was freezing, then you would, that's actually not a bad idea. Right. And there is a, there is a, a theory called snowball earth, snowball earth that back in some point in time, the earth was completely frozen. Eighties, which is where it all comes apart. Just in general, <laughs> this is where money goes wrong. Everything goes wrong. Um, yeah, yeah, good stuff. And, you know, more humans, right? I mean, there are just a lot, lot more humans we've, we've, we've been, and that, so that end bit I thought was good. Cause you, cause I was thinking all the way through this, like, it's just powerful, but you want a time series as well and so on, but that maybe it's a little hard to see in this room, but you know, that, that's, that has some potency. Um, can I get it to, no, oh, I want to see that again. This little bit, that's pretty good. You've got to, it's only going to show you, you know, you want it to rotate around or whatever, but it's pretty, uh, yeah, it's going to be there. Yeah. I mean, call us the warmest day of the year, right? That's, that's this telephone thing. That's a, that's a little messy, but. I mean, actually, so is it kind of, this is the 40s. If it, so there was this kind of cooling into the 60s. This is when people were starting to say, and you can see maybe there was a, you know, people got a little excited. But um, yeah, it would have been a bad time to melt uh, Antarctica at this point. That would have been a, oops. <laughs> I mean, people, so and another for the, you know, the framing matters, right? So climate change is what we talk about now because it is messy and localized flooding and all these sorts of things. It's not, uh, it's not just like a, this is, you know, that's the big picture, but, it, but locally messy things happen. Um, so there, there's sort of um, ridiculing of the frame of global warming, right? Like the, because scientists did and, and, you know, people who were worried about this did use that framing and then move to climate change. So there's, there's a mockery that goes in there. It's like, oh, yeah, now you're just making up another thing to like, you know, to put fear into us, you know. But, you know, <laughs> this is, uh... and we've seen it, the cherry blossoms, you know, that that's pretty compelling, the Japanese uh, record. It's, what, 1,200 years now? Okay. I think uh, since Tuesday, Zelensky spoke in the, in Congress. Is that right? That was yeah, because we talked a little bit about like how we, you know, in terms of storytelling, like he and um, uh, for the English um, Parliament, you know, he invoked um, Churchill and 
Shakespeare and so on. And, um, and so it was uh, interesting to see what he did for the US, which, you know, he went for the, right, you're, you're the big, you're the, you're the big guys, you've got to say this sort of thing. Um, like it's about democracy, blah, blah, blah. this is kind of your thing, right, right, so we should do that. Um, Yeah. Well, it's an interesting. So, and he, um, and then, and showed a video as well, right? Which I think for an American audience was, I mean, for a modern audience is compelling. You know, it's, uh, we live in the world of TikTok and so on. And that's a piece that can be spread. You know, it's, it's powerful. Um, that transition at some point where videos started to have subtitles on all of them was an interesting one in terms, just, just to sort of step out to like, contagion and spreadability because a lot of people can't maybe they're not listening to things but it's also just a better delivery i don't know i know younger people tend to watch like i we watch everything with subtitles just because it's more i, I mean i actually find it much more interesting I find what's that I find actually yeah well you that's right <laughs> And I'm sure people who make, you know, these movies and beautiful, you know, beautiful works of art hate this because it's just like some badly written thing across the bottom, which maybe is wrong too. Like you're listening to it, and you're like, wow, they just, <laughs> they just got that wrong, um, which is weird, uh, but it helps with concentration too, I suppose. Um, so, but in, so, you know, interesting. I mean, he, and of course he's, you know, that's his background is, um, is, 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 uh, well, it's comedy, but it's, you know, it's writing shows, it's creating stories. So we've seen that, you know, Reagan was a, Reagan was a, an actor. Um, we've seen a number of, I mean, Schwarzenegger, right? There's a number of people who have come through that route and it makes sense. You've actually got a pretty big, um, potentially you can have a, a, a lot of appeal. And if you're good at what you do, then maybe, you know, maybe you are really good at the rhetorical part, right? So. Um, you know, Trump's a storyteller, right? He's a storyteller. It was really the apprentice that um, gave him that kind of platform that, that which, which to go back to stories of survival, you know, so that, that survivor recast into the city was Mark Burnett's idea to do that. Um, I mean, he came up with that. I think he, I think survival was something he got from somewhere else, you know. Um, you know, so it's literally called Survivor, but of course the people who are creating this are also trying to make things that for them, you know, works, right? Okay. Anyway, so yeah, I, I think, well, we'll see. I mean, it seems to have uh, evoked a, a response, right? I mean, there's sort of the storyline is like he gives this thing and then Biden says $800 million, which it's a pretty good present. <laughs> it's a pretty good honorarium for uh, showing, showing up for a talk. So this tweet the other day of someone saying, you know, I got someone who's in, a, I think, an English department, maybe at Michigan, saying how, uh, so it's, it's a couple of years old, but how they get paid, you know, they, they get paid, you know, anywhere from 500 to $8,000, $10,000 for a talk. And, you know, it's just like the cult, it depends on the culture you're in, right? Like STEM kind of stuff. I don't, it's just, no, no one does that. But, um, but I have colleagues who, yeah, they won't get out of bed unless someone gives them five thousand bucks for a talk, which they've given a million times. You know, they just they just like they just deliver it like this. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. It's pretty interesting. You know. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, like, you know, I'm, my badly produced, uh, you know, <laughs> slow TV that I put up as I'm starting to call it more. Um, you know, whatever, you know, just, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the, but of course, celebrity type characters get paid. You know, universities will give them $100,000 or something. Yeah, I don't know, I'm talking about just universities. Obviously, Wall Street will give you huge sums for talks. Just, wow, what a, that's pretty good. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, Someone must, someone wants me to give me a hundred thousand dollars for talking about stories. I, I guess I would do it, but it's, but it's just amazing to me, like just thinking about, you know, anyway, anyway. All right. Uh, but that was connected to, you know, I think Zelensky probably gave one of the best, uh, in terms of extracting some money 
from a large body of people. That was pretty good. Um, so we will see. But you know, it's survival, and, and this little this little character here. This is what you know, da danger is. True north on this compass of of meaning. So we'll we'll get to that. So I don't know. Just think about. It. I mean, you know, um, you know, what's in your story, the, the piece you've looked at? Community. You know, like a lot of danger in community. A lot of and, and, and there's sort of a way of people talking about stories that it's always about conflict, right? Like we, stories, are, like that's sort of, people who think about stories often come up, it's an old idea that, that every story has to have conflict. There are various sort of framings of this, right? There's sort of a, a rise in action, some sort of big event, sometimes called a climax, and then it sort of fades away after that. You know, there are various sort of um, ideas. I talked about them a little bit in part, but, um, you know, a lot of stories really are framed around uh, a danger safety axis. And I'll show that that's language as well. All right, so I'm just going to get on with this. So this is what we got to the other day. And just to sort of reiterate, so there are these old studies, and it's built out of semantic differentials, people being presented with something. So you're given a word and a semantic differential rated on. You could be given a picture or a face. Right, there are lots of other things that, that are studied in this way. So there's just something you're evaluating, and you're not, you know, you're not. I mean, the, the real things we have, you know, like what length and and weight and all these sort of physical measurements you could imagine. These are these messy meaning measurements that we're trying to to um, uh, work with. And semantic differential is a very clever idea. We'll sort of I'll show you. We've we've had a lot about, of course, the Likert scale, which is Right, so he's happy and sad, and there's sort of neutral, and then one, two, three, four this way, one, two, three, four this way. So it's two Likert scales of, of five points joined together. It's very common, and I think most studies have done that. What we'll work from here is uh, something that's different. So let's see. So again, um, this is sort of the 1940s, maybe the 30s and 50s. There's like very small numbers of words, small numbers of people. Um, so now we have tens of thousands of words. I don't think anyone's done 100,000, um, but also online ratings. So you can really um, you know, scale this up. Uh, there, the one study, one of the studies I'll talk about, it's 10, maybe 20,000 words. Well, it's a different one perhaps, but on the order of this, and then just straight up translated using Google Translate, which is okay, but you sort of, you know, then now you've got a hundred languages. We know that that's somewhat robust for these sort of very elemental measures like happiness. Uh, so again, types and not tokens, right? So you just focused on the lexicon and not how frequently they're used. This is fine to start with, but then you need to think about how frequently they're used to really get a sense of what's happening in the world, right? So this is a problem that happens over and over again. So Google Books is exactly this kind of problem. It's a, well, it's sort of in between. It's a mixture because it, it has tokens, but it doesn't have the popularity. It doesn't have how often, how, how often are these things read. All right, that's, that's complicated. All right, I mentioned Likert scales just to get these again. So um, uh, it's difficult to work with SVD and then just a whole pile of words. So we'll, I'll show you what I, you know, what we've sort of come up with there to, to deal with that. And then um, this really difficult problem of you say, okay, I'm going to call this a happy sad axis. And then I'm going to try to tell people what those endpoints are. That's a really hard problem. So how do we how do we do with that? All right. So just to reiterate, this is the ANU study um, where my particular journey with this and you know Chris Danforth back in the day like was was this uh, arrived at by Google. And you know this is again this is this funny Likert scale neutral in the middle one two three four this way these weird little mannequin things to to help you make sense of it. Uh, but this is very much by point in history. It's like 40 years after the Osgood work where this is just understood to be the three fundamental dimensions of meaning. Like that's taken for granted. And in this case, it's being applied to words. So that was sort of the, uh, you know, a thousand words. So that was the, the big advance. Um, you know, I use this. We, we This is how we built our first hedonometer. I remember I this is one of the few papers. So I have, I have online, you know, like if you go to these citations, right? I mean, this is a thing I built in from this course early on. You go here and 
you know, here's the reference. There's no PDF for this one, right? I mean, the whole idea of this is like, I try to put these online so people can use them. There's no PDF for it. And it's because the, one of the authors wrote to me and said, please take it down, which is amazing to me. It's just amazing to me. I mean, it's just, you know, just what are we, what are we doing? I mean, maybe they make money of it, but I think they were actually protecting the, the publisher, you know, like, because you, you, you know, this is this stupid game where we write the thing and a publisher makes money out of it, which I totally do not have any interest in anymore. You know, like burn it all down. It's absolutely disgraceful. The whole review thing, it's just a, just a, just absolutely insane. So, um, yeah, so I can't actually share that with you because it's you know, insane. But, you know, go on SciHub or whatever. It's a, it's a pretty, it's just a few pages and then just tons of, words in a list right so that's that's the thing and this is one of the ones where it was a let me see if i can find it so i, ha I had to hide it somewhere uh papers is it there Bradley? Yeah, so this is the paper. First of all, it's like in port, it's in um, landscape mode, kind of weird. So it's more like a page. So it's just one, two, three. And then it's just the list of the results, right? So I remember, I, I don't, you know, whatever I was using at the time, I had to, I had to, uh, there you go, I've selected it all. So this is very primitive, right? This is a bad data wrangling problem. This is, you know, dot, right, text. Copy this into a, let's try it. Uh, thing. Nope. So first of all, let's see if I can copy it. Yes. So here it is, and maybe I've showed you this before, but look, this nasty mess, and then you have to think, oh, Terrible. So this is, this is a, I think this is a page. So then you have to figure out the, pa yeah, exactly. Right. So it's a page. The table is totally destroyed. Um, I guess it's, it's coming to, you, you have to figure this out, right? So this is coming to us as that's a line. That's a line. That's a line. Okay. There's another set of words now. Wow. That is terrible. Oh, Wow. Wow, that is disgusting. So somehow, back in the day, I must have been able to figure this out. But the, the, so now you, now you have this kind of difficult, you know, this problem of like finding it, did it paste in a pattern, that the PDF thing? And like, how do you, <laughs> how do you clean this up to make it into a nice matrix? So insane. I mean, why do they provide you with, this is terrible. This is just so terrible. That's right. Yeah. But it doesn't, but PDF doesn't, right? The way it's, the way, if you just copy something, it doesn't yeah. do it. If there are two columns, yeah. Of PDF. Okay. Yeah. I obviously would have just tried to do it with at most Perl scripts or something, you know, <laughs> just pattern recognition stuff. But yeah, yeah. A lot of PDF tools are floating around, but they always seem a little scammy. Right? There's some nasty look at like you find them and you're like, no, 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 no. The conversion software online. Every conversion thing is a scam, obviously. It's like clearly puts really, bad things. Like about yeah, it's like you know, Vladimir Putin thanks you for installing. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels so so bad. And, but it's 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 well done because people clearly want to do this a lot. Like image things, video conversion. Well, I use them. Like I'm not use them. Well, it's like the Kindle stuff, trying to get the text out of that. Like you look around for that. There's some dodgy stuff, you know, and, and anyway, so, so this was, this was some sort of nightmare to deal with, but okay. So good. All right. You use, where's the other one? It's, um, Poisoner 1981. 
So this paper, maybe we'll get to it later. It's a different thing. This is a paper about, um, so this is one I had to scan. So that's a problem for a start. I photocopied this, this is years ago in the 1990s. And um, it, the data is in one of these. It's in, uh, wow. Like this is the actual thing that I wrote. Uh, unbelievable. Sorry. I think it must be in. Let's just open these. Yeah, this one. No, it's not there. I can't believe it. I remember calling this guy. He'd retired from the UC Davis and um, had taken up pottery. I, I I will try to talk about this later. It's it's normally in this course. I just um, I don't know why I don't have it quite the oh it's nine ninety yeah it is not that one really struggling with this basically linear regression gone wild and then I think it's this one. This B meant that I put it in my bid tech. Um, <laughs> yes. So this is one where I had to read all, just read them all off and just enter them into a Emacs. It wasn't, you know, it took a while. I remember we were driving to Cape Cod. My wife was driving and I was entering these things and then I did a regression. I'm like, this is all wrong. <laughs> you monsters. Um, I'll tell you about that later. Okay. All right. Yeah, and again, they're, they're all, um, you know, uh, Latin names for organisms, so it was sort of try not to make a mess of it. At, le at least the data was there in the paper, which was a thing, but it's just exactly, it's like this was this, you know, it's, I mean, I guess it's ours, but it's sort of not, you know, it's doable, but it's just like, wow, this is. You have to really want to do it right. right, right. Um, so let's talk about this. Balance is presented this way, and I know I've talked about this before, but it's just like, look at this confusion. All right, you, you are happy, pleased, satisfied, contented, hopeful. You know, that's a range of stuff. At the other end, you're completely unhappy, annoyed, unsatisfied, melancholy, despaired, or bored. And bored very much is going to start to overlap with the arousal dimension, right? Because this is very much like low excitement. But unhappy is different to melancholic. I mean, these are, you know, important states. Annoyed is different. You know, these are different things. So um, anyway, the hedonomy, the whole thing that we built, um, you know, we framed around happiness, but it was really about essential meaning. Um, we also know ANU is a no-no, um, and it's exactly this problem that I had at the end of the list, which is it's an expert chosen list of a thousand words. So it's things like church and pancakes. Um, it's just a weird list. It's just a weird list of words. So, so in terms of creating a lens out of it, it doesn't fit very well onto any real corpus. Um, so uh, as I said, they're, they're good words, but it does not cover real text. And this is really, wow, this is, this is a hard thing for people to sort out. And if you look at it, if you go back to that weird uh, PDF that I showed you, and look through it, it's like, well, the arousal and dominance ones don't, there's not a lot of variation. So you sort of think, okay, maybe that's not enough. But we knew from the start that there were only a thousand words, it wasn't enough. What happens if we had 10,000 and, and that? Took a long time, but we get there. Okay, so here's the, here's the thing we're gonna move to. So really, this is a different space. So this is um, some, some real power here. So. So if Mohammed is uh, works in Canada for the I think the National Research Council there, and it's a lot of single author um, papers like this, looking at language and scoring words, um, done some very interesting things. And uh, okay, so this is a sort of a computational linguistics world, and so we can say twenty thousand English words, but he's going to do the VAD framework, right? Balance, arousal, dominance. 
Um, and it's going to use this thing, best worst scaling. So this is a completely different game. Uh, so in general, how this works, and it's it's somewhat new. Let's see. This is not something from 1750, I don't think. I mean, ranking's been around forever. There you go. There's some, so now, of course, as we go back, there's this 1960s. Yeah. The idea languished for three decades until the first working papers appeared in the early 1990s. So this, this is a, you know, given all the things we do with rankings and so on, this is a surprisingly recent concept. So you ask people to rate n things at once, and all they have to do in that is choose the top and bottom. So you give people seven words or seven faces or seven animals and say, you know, which one's the biggest, which one's the smallest. That's it. And that's usually not too bad. It's a semantic differentials, right? So hopefully they're reasonably well defined, although that's the problem with VAD. They're not that well defined. But you should be able to, you, you, you kind of hope that this is, you might hope that people can do a reasonable job with this. So why, why only the top and bottom? Obviously, if you give a, people 100 things, it's going to be too much, right? Like that's sort of too much to sort through to find the best and worst. So you want a small number. Two obviously works, right? That's a straight up, that's a straight up ranking thing. Um, but that's slow. Three is not bad, four is not bad. You know, so sort of small numbers is what you want, right? And in what he did, he used four. Uh, so there are four, there are six comparisons of things according to however you want to compare them. You're asking people to compare them. You know, maybe let's say it's, you know, hard to soft, whatever it is. And it could be, um, you know, materials, it could be animals, it could be anything. Or it could be words, you know, did you, you know, yeah. Uh, and for n equals four, so there are six uh, comparisons, right? So there are um, four choose two, I've got that right, which is four times three divided by two, so that's six. So you've got A, B, C, and D. You could say to people, here are, here's A and B, here's B and C, is seen to, like give them these six pairs and get them to do that, right? So we can do that. That's six, there'll be six activities. This becomes one activity and you get five of the rankings immediately, right? Because um, looks like boards are very optional. Wow. Wow, is that true? There's a thing here. No. Nope. Sure. I mean, the path's going to be limited, but um, but that's always true. So I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I recommend purloining what. Sure. Go for it. <laughs> the heist, it's a heist story. <laughs> uh, have you seen the Rick and Morty heist? That heist episode? Yeah. It's a, it's a very rewatchable because it is extremely complicated. Heistatron, is that what it is? Which is which is definitely their thing. They love it. They love it. I mean, I think basically Dan Harmon watched Inception and then just said, "I will make every possible version of Inception," which is his own. What's that? A little bit of it, yeah. That's the. Have we lost Carter? Carter has been taken. Uh, see, it's poorly distributed amongst. Right, there's some sort of. There's an earn model problem here that has been <laughs> been failed, yeah. Right, I mean, UVM is supposed to be, we're in Vermont, it's supposed to be this egalitarian, like everyone gets the same, but here, yeah, here we are with the, with the rubber barons of today, you know, <laughs> piling up markers. I bet you it's a political scientist. Yeah. 
I once had a political scientist who said, just kind of say like, oh yeah, we have the best officers because we're we're just you know we're good at we you know we're good at negotiating. That's why math is in a garbage space because they're idiots. You know, they're, they're not they're not good at the the, the, the line. Um, uh, but let's say you've got A, B, C, and D, and you say, um, well, let's say alphabetic gamma delta. Let's do that. And you say, okay, I think um, you know you're given these these things and you say, all right, I think gamma is number one and then and um, beta is number four, right? So then we don't know these, but there's two and three and that could be alpha or um, uh, what's my other one, delta. I should have done it to see. Okay, all right. Uh, so, but now we know we've got uh, alpha is uh, gamma is greater than alpha, right? So we've got gamma compared to these three. They're all there. And gamma is greater, you know, greater than whatever is ordered in this way. Um, I've did, done two alphas. But we also know that we have this comparison. So we know alpha is greater than beta and um, delta is greater than beta. And the only one we don't know about is, is this one, alpha and um, uh, delta. So that's, that's five. That's pretty good. So uh, it's still a, you know, it's a ranking thing. Um, you know, ranking ranking has been thought about for a long time. Um, I mean, I don't mean the zip thing, but just, you know, giving, but usually it's been more like take any two rank, you know, rate, um, compare them, you know, this one is better than this one and do that repeatedly for a whole ensemble. Or for voting, actually order them completely. Like these are your preferences. Shown to have various problems, blah, blah, blah. But, um, but it's actually a really powerful thing. There's the Australian, the whole Australian runoff thing is, is good. The Australian system of voting, which is um, you actually give all your preferences. And then at the end of the, there's a first round. It was here in Burlington for a while and they voted it out because it didn't do the thing. They, you know, it didn't behave in a good way. Because someone can get a lot of votes, first place votes. So you can get someone who gets 40% of the first place votes but doesn't win because everyone else hates them. Right? They rank dead last by everyone else because, you know, and you, in a plurality thing, you could have someone who gets 20% of the first place votes but is evil, you know, like, right? This is like they've, they've got some demonic cult or something, you know, but everyone else really despises them. They would win if you just sort of took along with the most, you know, the leader. There are lots of systems like this. But if you then say, okay, we're going to go through and we'll get rid of the person who's got the, la the least number, right? We're going to take them out and then we'll re-rank. We so, someone, so someone had all these first place votes, you know, they're the last place. You take them away and then you redistribute their votes. So whoever was second for them, right? So you've got this Kermit the Frog had 5% of the votes. They're all ones. Whoever was two, then you redistribute them and then look at it all again. So now you've got more first place votes and you keep doing it. We did this in my college, uh, this Trinity College, which is part of Melbourne Uni, or so, you know, next to it, it's like the Oxford stories. Um, but I remember we had a vote for the senior person and uh, I was on the thing and we did this and had this runoff and you kept you know, peeling away people, peeling away. We got to the last two and they, they had the same vote. It was extremely difficult to get to. So we actually, was a, they, they got a joint um, position as a head student or whatever. Didn't get along, wasn't great. Um, <clears throat> but it, it, that, that was, I remember there was a really unlikely thing to achieve. Anyway, there, there are good ways of voting, but it's a little bit more complicated, right? And it, ha it can have a bad story where people can get upset because look, you know, I was leading in the first round. And then you have to say, well, everyone else hates you and that's not, you know, that's not great. Um, but it allows you as a voter to convey more information, which should be good, right? Like, anyway. Um, that is a kind of, that's a really bad problem. <laughs> Wow, that's just incredibly bad. Oh.
And you do have to change as, you know, places grow, but you, you want, this is too hard for the Supreme Court, right? They just can't, handle, like, this is just way, you know, but you, you want something that just does something agnostically, you know, just divides it into grid or something like that. I mean, functionally, functionally, yes, right? They're like, you know, it's like, well, boop, and that's like, yeah, right. Right, right. I mean, why did you do it? Okay. Pretty quick. Anyway, this is a clever thing, right? And it mean, what it also means is um, you can do this pretty quickly because someone can do, you know, for four, someone can you know, do this fairly easily. It's the inter rater reliability is, is better than the Likert scale approach. So that's a huge plus. Um, you only need maybe four or five people to vote to, to rate things rather than sort of 50 per word. It's a, you know, it is a different, it is a comparison thing, but it's, um, which is, which is different because the, the Likert scale, you know, a word stands on its own. I mean, you are of course trying to fit it into whatever, what you've done before, but you're saying, you know, this is a, which we're very used to, right? Amazon or, well, Netflix doesn't do that anymore, but lots of five-star rating things, right? So like, you're just rating. Well, they, oh, oh, they want to go to one that's not, that's not too many, because yeah. the too many is obviously yeah. fake. Yeah, right. A Amazon has really gotten weird. I mean, yeah. all right, let's look at a Terry Pratchett book. So, he, you know, here's their ratings, right? And what's interesting, I tweeted about this years ago, and I, if you look at this, right, so it says 81%, 15%. So how are ratings calculated? So you would think this is also, it has an average here, right? It says, does it say, I mean, it looks like a, it sort of shows you five, but you see a 4.8. You see a 4.8. Okay. So you see a number there. And your brain is like, I guess that's the average, right? But in fact, To calculate the overall star rating, it's a star rating. It's not an average rating. They actually use a slightly different word. And I misunderstood. I didn't read that properly. You know, we don't, I mean, I mean, they've said this for a long time, but I just, instead our system considers right, how recent, right, right. It also, to verify, I mean, who knows, right? So this is like, so it's a black box. I mean, I, I understand you have to do something, but it's like, this is, this is kind of what we're left with. It's like, ah, and, um, you know, people have of course gamed Amazon reviews for, for a long time. And, it, and of course there's a, diff it's a, it's an arms race thing, right? Amazon will do something and blah, blah, blah. And so people get around that in some way. Yeah, there's a lot of, and then it, it seems to have stopped a bit, but there was a, I was like a little thing at the end. I was given this as a free such and such. It did not affect my review at all. Like there's a little, yeah. A anything that says I bought this for my husband or, or my wife is obviously a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Things like it arrived promptly in the mail. It's clearly, it's, you know, English is, it's like clearly paying people to pump up that thing, you know. Uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe, yeah, the reviews are pretty weird. Do you have reviews of, like, publishing books on Amazon? Like, you know, like, Goodreads and all the comments and reviews are just, like, really bad quality stuff. I think they're just, like, the cults. Oh, yeah, that's not, that's not good. You see that, like, the New York Times people will put in limericks and stuff, and I'm always like, that's just not, I don't know, it's a it's a personal response, but it's, it's yeah, that's an indictment on the well. That's, so that tells you something about who's reading the book. So that that's probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. On, 
there's one new. Someone, someone has it as a, so it's, it's become a, yeah. CDs don't last though. That's nice. That's nice. Let's put it on there. There's a paperback and then there's a, there's the mass market one. The US has different covers. Yeah. Um, this is a good one. Uh, so, yeah, interesting. I mean, lots of ratings. I mean, Netflix kind of waited. I don't even, do they even have a up down thing anymore? Okay. Oh, it helps you. <laughs> but it gives you a percentage, right? It really tries to, it makes this big claim. A big claim. And it's not like, it, it could be much more coarse grain. We think you'll like this, but it's like 93%, you know. Like, what, what, yeah, you want to know what the, what's 50% for you? <laughs> You, you, well, you guys are young. You might not know this, but years ago when Netflix was developing, they, um, they put out this big crowdsourcing thing where you could, you know, come up with a system for them. And if <laughs> it was pretty smart, obviously people did a ton. There was a prize, and it was, it might, it was like a million or a hundred thousand. Like it was, it was some, right? But it, basically, yeah, yeah. Well, the problem was people would rate, you know, like Happy Gilmore or something with a five out of five, and then Citizen came like a three out of five. So it was like, what is what is wrong with humans, right? And part of it was sequencing and expectations and that sort of stuff. And it was a mixture of like SVD and um, some psychology stuff, basically. That well, kind I of. Think I think basically the way they do recommendations is like the plus minuses aren't for like is this good, is this bad. It's they like, do you like it? Group people together so they can use those people to give you recommendations. And you just need up or down. Like, and then for that, all you need is like that. There's a thing in, I think it's set in Finland, but it was a, uh, the idea was as you lit, it was set up for gas stations, I think. So as you left, and I think it was the bathroom, right? The idea was like, you know, we just kind of want to have a sense of, as you left, there were two buttons and you say it was good or bad. That's it, right? And, and then you get a lot of data over time because it's easy to push. Um, it's not like a one to five scale, you have to think about it like this, just like up or down and, and people could, you know, it actually is, is pretty, pretty helpful. Just, so I think that also fed into these things, just like this other, but you know, for something like YouTube, you know, this, it's, it, the negativity of it is really kind of awful. Like, I don't want to. Like three buttons, when you leave, you can see the Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's like the worst this... idea ever because you're just trying to figure it. Well, I mean, you smash the, smash the sad one. Just do it. I mean, it's good. It's good they're asking. It's good. Well, it will be interesting to see. Maybe a lot of people like that was the best damn piece I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Delta, like we have three, three more, you know, on average, the average went up three. <laughs> it was a, <laughs> are you happy with your democracy? So, all right. So here's, here's the, here's the plan. <clears throat> and then you can kind of, now you'll have this ordering of everything, right? Once you've done enough of this and you've jumbled them up and presented different sets of, in this case, groups of four, you have a whole set of them and you can arrange things in some, however you want, but uh, this, this, this general way is on a zero to one scale. Okay, so, um, and it turns out the medians and means of these distributions are a half, but they aren't 
they aren't uh, symmetric, right? So they're skewed again. So that's sort of a bit of an interesting piece because we saw that skew for positivity. We're going to see it again here. So this is what this is what was done by uh, in the Muhammad work. You know, he's using stuff from the past. People have written papers critiquing all of this, trying to figure out what everyone's done and how authors have changed over time. But they've used, I think he used something, some of that A new stuff. Let's see. So I don't think board is here. That's a bit different. But um, <clears throat> you know. They are, you know, you can say this is sort of basically different, but it turns out that people will, people correlate this, right? That these are, these are correlated things. So that's what we'll see here. The correlations that come out, there's, now we've got 20,000 words. I should add that they are, they're kind of good words. They're, there aren't, they've been, you know, scooped out of all sorts of things. There are some hashtag type ones where the hashtag's taken away, like, You'll see suicide bomber is one, but it's one word. Um, clearly some sort of weird hashtag thing. There are a couple of two and three four, four word phrases, but mostly it's single words. Um, and there are no um, names of people or places, which we, we had in ours, right? Because we just went through Twitter and took the top 5,000 and took the top 5,000 from New York Times and so on. So things like Clinton and Trump, you know, because it's 2008, were in there. Trump is in there because it's a word, I guess. Um, it, well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, at Justin Bieber's in that. So it's a bit weird. Um, <clears throat> Bieber, Fuba, you know, huge on Twitter in 2008. So these correlations are not small, right? These are just standard, um, uh, uh, st standard, cor I'm not even going to use the name of a person. The standard correlation coefficient, right? So there's a rank-based one, which is, I think better in a lot of ways, but this is just the standard correlation coefficient. So you see a huge one between dominance and valence, right? So this is kind of this is, this is the happiness one or the positive one, and this is the power one. They are really high up. Barney rubble is trouble. This is rhyming slang, right? So that's a common rhyming. A bit of Barney rubble just means trouble. No one is, no one thinks about what the Flintstones when you say that. They just mean trouble. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, this is a this this is a worry, right? Now, Muhammad says this is because people didn't understand the instructions or whatever, right? And various other papers do the same sort of thing. It's like, well, we we know they're really no, but um, I don't know. To me, this is like fine. Pe people on average took these into their heads and they did something with it. That's okay. But now you have to actually look to. Those correlations are important. <clears throat> and so this is, uh, I sort of thought of it as an English muffin to start with. This is valence, arousal, and dominance. And, and if I have a 3D thing that was moving around, you know, it depends how you orient it. And I have some slices from the side. Um, wow, I really did some crazy things with this. But uh, you're trying to figure out what, what's going on with this. And as you sort of rotate this around, you can see it's really got, you know, uh, it flattens. Yeah. It's not... It is, if these were orthogonal, right, and they really are completely uncorrelated dimensions, this would be some big smush. And you wouldn't be able to see any grain in it. Um, this is from the side for valence and dominance, pretty spread out. There are definitely high, you know, very happy words that are low in terms of this dominance one and, and so on. And, and you, what you can't see here are words that are on top of each other, right? So this is a scatter plot. Um, but it's, it, there's, a, there's a grain going that way that is, um, Correlation of point four, we're close to point point five. Yeah. So that's helpful, but as usual, right? We have to somehow figure out how to look at the words. And I don't, I don't really. I mean, it's just an enormous amount of work that goes into this uh, of mad, total madness. <clears throat> I would say probably, well, uh, the most exciting week of my research life was working on this. It was just like I just went. Berserk on this because I got to this thing and then just spent all this time trying to figure out how to make this thing talk, right? You know, what is this word? What is this word? You could have something where you roll over and so on, but that's, you know, problematic. So what we're, so the idea was, okay, well, we can coarse grain this and um, do a simple thing, make a histogram, right? So take the dots away and just put boxes here and then have color to represent how many points are in there. 
Because just in general, if point clouds very misleading, you have no idea what the density is in there. Right? All these things are just on top. Big smoosh. So we want to take that out. We want to make a histogram. And then we need to label it in some way. And so this is what we'll call an oozeogram. Um, but it really could be used for SVDs, um, SVD things in general. So the variance explained by VAD, we're going to get to SVD now, 44%, um, 28%, and 27%. So, you know, that's a reasonable amount. But again, we see that like valence, this, this happiness dimension is the dominant dimension. And these two are about the same. There have been a lot of arguments in, over time as to you know, whether even dominance matters, blah, 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 like, yeah, lots of things. So we're going to apply SVD, and um, then we end up with pretty solid uh, uh, sigma values, right? So these are, these are decent looking things. The variance explains that goes with that. So it's the square of these divided by the sum of squares. It's a one on thing. So that's going to be a what we'll call goodness energy structure, and I'll get to these, I'll get you why we use those words. Uh, 55%, 35%, and 9%. So this is a big change, right? Now there's a third dimension that's really pushed down. So this is tr this is now, SVD is going to fit a, a some sort of football thing to that big cloud of points. Uh, and it's not, it's not going to be, as it turns out, it's not oriented to the underlying VAD axis. It's squished around and it's a flattened one. So, and it's not a, it's not a, a pancake, it's not a muffin exactly, right? Because it's a little, Got, it's got one axis that's longer than the other, but it's pretty thin in that third axis. And if we rotate this thing around in, in this plane, so we're going to rotate this kind of football around thing, and we'll call this, we'll get to power danger structure. It's going to take a while to get to that, but then then um, you get an equal uh, amount of explain, um, variance explained by power and danger. It's still the, because the positivity axis is still the sort of big one. We'll get to it. Okay, so this is a good thing to try and work through. So this is what we had before, two, you know, two slides ago. We've replaced, I've moved it across so that the, uh, it's between minus one and one here. So I've subtracted a half from each of the dimensions. And what's going on? So as I said, there's a histogram. So we're just going to simply, you know, put a box in here and it's like, it looks like a third of, 0.1 is the box size. Just do that. So you just do that uniformly through this whole space. Count up how many how many words are in each one, and then we've got this bin. This is a scale that's used for other oseograms here. So you can see it doesn't really get up very high. Pretty flat. It's pretty spread out. Um, this this set of words has a couple of function words, but it doesn't have things like the or of or and. As I said, they were pretty good word words, right? They're um, 20,000, they're pretty meaningful, and they there aren't uh, place names or anything like that. So they're, they're just good good word words. Okay, so how are we doing this? All right. So the most useful thing to do to start with was to try and get a sense of what the periphery is like. And the way this is done is to, this is you know, MATLAB for you to enjoy, um, is uh, to create a um, convex hull, right? So you've got this set of points. So there's a user convex hull calculation, which is a built-in thing. So we get a convex hull, so that's going to be this kind of right going around here. And it's a, because this is a point cloud, it's going to be piecewise linear, right? It's not some loop like this. You could tune it to have um, uh, some curvature if you want. But this is going to be basically, and I don't have that plot in here, but there's sort of a piecewise linear hull that goes around it. Then go around this thing and then give it some sort of characteristic width and then break up that those lines and then within so you find the normal to right so say this is the hole here you find the normal to find the center of each of these boxes find the normal um vector and then go in this way and find the closest word right so imagine there's this line that's about here and we're going to say we're going to break that line up into pieces and in each little box here, we're going to say, okay, take the middle, find the normal, go in here and find the, the point that's closest. So it's just a bit of vector sort of stuff. And then um, the words will be written along the normal. So you can see these are all have the same. I think these, these should be all basically the same um, in terms of angle. 
So they're written in the middle, and then there's a line that's pointing to exactly where the word is. So that's this outside piece. The middle, then we're just going to we're going to say, okay, we're just going to go through the middle. We're going to go through these diagonals as well, and then there's some things to tune where we just say, let's find the word that's closest to the center point of of right this box. Da da da. We won't put any arrows, and we'll do that this way and this way, and we'll do it this way for readability. Okay, and there's sort of you know limits to here, so it's not overwritten so much, so you can kind of get a sense of it. Okay, so that's that was the 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 madness behind this. So that can be used. For, there are lots of things that where the types are underneath it. I mean, we saw that for LO taxonometry, or the zip law. There are all these types sitting there that need to be you know made to talk. You know, there are the little details like gray, like changing the grayscale here, alternating to make it more readable. That's all that is. Um, and then there's some labeling of this is valence, this is dominance, and they, then they have um, adjectives that describe them. So more positive, more negative, um, more submissive and more dominant that way. And then this is a compass of sorts. So dominant, submissive, negative, positive, and then you have like Northeast and um, South, Southeast, right? So we, we'll combine them. Generally done so that it's like North, right? So the dominant negative is here. That's like Northwest or Northeast. So the top word is going to go first. These are real details for you. And the bottom word is going to go first here as well. So it's a compass kind of thing. The, this piece in here is the SVD for this, this slice, right? So if you can see that this football thing, this ellipse is not, right? It's not doing this. That's what we would expect if it was a, you know, well done. It's really clearly off axis. You know, I mean, sure, it could be whatever, a little wobbly, but it's, this is, this is, this is not good. There's a lot of correlation between these two dimensions. So that's a setup for it. And now we can kind of look at the words and see what's going on, right? So, um, you know, this is success and triumph and greatness, right? So you just get a sense that these words are, you know, that's something that that's going to be, you know, that's a word that we might think for humans, but I mean, you, you know, a cat could have success. Um, you know, brotherhood, there's a lot of sort of human based things, strength and conquer, you know, that's getting to like a, a big scale piece, powerful could apply to lots of things. So as you go from success, so this is winning, right? This is kind of winning triumph. I mean, winning is a word that succeed. And you can kind of see as you strengthen out in that axis, it goes from conscientious reasoning, compliance, qualifying royalty, wealth, amazing, you know, to success. So that's sort of the, that axis is endpoint. And as you move around here, you've still got this kind of, right? So this is like dumb. This is like good, good power in a way is sort of what's going on there. Um, as you move around this way, there's a kind of leadership stuff in here, but it turns, it starts to turn bad, right? So success is maybe individual as well, right? This is a little bit, yeah. And then it, it starts to become, kind of larger and individuals controlling groups, right? Um, yeah, so, you know, and then, then it turns into war, sniper is in here, dictator, dictatorial, weapon, right? So these become kind of elements of this. So these are powerful negative things. And then you lose that kind of like larger size of society perhaps or population that's invoked here. You know, worship is, you know, big groups of people. This becomes, it becomes more sort of individual. There's war is still here, but murderous, murderer, homicidal, toxic, nightmare, pain, swearing, um, mistreated, sort of shit, depressed. This becomes more smaller scale and bad for the individual. Um, round to pointless and insignificant, right? So this is the opposite of success is not failure, but nothingness which is interesting. And I saw that in oh, some shows watching, might have been some Marvel thing, but yeah, someone was getting at the big bad character and they said, you know, you're, you're, what you're, it's not failure, it's nothingness, it's being nothing. It was, it was, it was good, it fits into this. Failure is uh, actually more out here because failure has some kind of power in it. Like you're actually doing, there's something going on. This is zero nothingness. 
And, you know, you can see crutch, unauthorized, disoriented, blindfolded, vomiting, unclean, ineffective, penniless. So pointless, in sort of nothingness. That's, um, oh, it's poor, right, okay, poor. Um, then you've got, you know, it's still out here, you know, these are weak things, but frog appears and sheep, these become sort of, you know, lazy, there's sort of a softness to this stuff. Bunny is in here, biscuit, you know, it becomes kind of warmer. Pajamas, you know, so you can see coffee house, suave, soft, petal, bear. It's teddy bear. That word is teddy, that's teddy bear. So this is more like, you know, this is a good place. Everyone's happy. And that's, you know, and that kind of keeps going up, right? Tenderness, sweetest, it's pretty nice, enjoyable, brotherhood, da, da, da. And then it sort of moves into more of a power thing. You know, so there's a very sensible kind of way that, you know, the, at least people have evaluated this thing. It's, it's come up with a pretty good um, framing. Yeah, like interrogate badass, nuclear armed, up to nuke and firearm. Uh, we've done this one. Uh, this is hurrah, merciful, flowering, sweetheart. You know, so sort of a love thing out here. And this is corrupt, going this way to toxic. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that so this is a big thing to dig into is what are the antonyms, and so I came up with a different term because the general out of controlness of what we do, which is so these are antusionyms and synusionyms, right? So these are so success and winning and greatness. These are synusionyms in that they're if you boil everything away from those words, you're left with sort of success. Yeah, antusionyms. You're, the OUS is in there. So it's an anonyms, which is like a direct thing. And it's what we, and trusionyms means it's just, and there's a whole bu bunch of those, right? So that like they, they have, um, in, the essential meaning is opposite, right? They're clouds of things. You know, so pajama and dictator are antusionyms. Right. If you take all the, yeah, the extra dimensions of meaning off, like you, this is, very soft and friendly. This is not. This is very bad and, and controlling. So, right. These are word clouds for grown-ups. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we have a. We've had this the whole time. We're like no word clouds. Like it's like you know, like a huge cross. Like we should put one on the wall. I mean, they're fun things, the wordle things or whatever. But you know, in academic work. I mean, it's what we did with all the word shift stuff. It's like, just there's, there's just this, you have two dimensions to like actually add some meaning. And of course, this is very, like the word clouds, we had to list them and make history. You know, we were doing something with it. There are other things you can do, but this is literally a space. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, how do you annotate it? This, this I mean, yeah, this, this took a, a lot of work to make this. You know, cause you can imagine like doing the convex hull and getting it wrong and, you know, like, and, and things, all the words are over here. You know, there's a million renderings and they're pointing the wrong way and you're trying to get that because you want the normal and it's going, what? You, can, you know, once you get this thing, you have to resample it so that you've got it gapped. So now you have this little um, convex hull that's like, boop, 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 boop. and then it, for each little interval, you say, okay, I'm going to work on that interval only. You know, you look at words in its little, lane and play around with that until it, it you know starts behaving now with with weirder looking things you can get a bit of a mess here where sometimes these overlap there's also once these are labeled you don't want this you don't want tiny to be labeled again so there's there's a you remember which words you've labeled and you know if it tries to do tiny you say no you can't do it right so fair enough but you can imagine like there's just like I'm just saying it out loud, but it's just a, just a, just a, you know, just a, just a, an error strewn thing. We're trying to get to the, you know, trying to get to this end result, but um, it was a struggle. I'm going to introduce this and we're going to really try to understand this um, next week, I think. But uh, so this is sort of the big story. This is the big story. And these are now, again, these are zero grams taking away the middle ones because you can just sort of get the outside. Uh, so it's a smaller scale one. These are the original from the original data set, right? So this is arousal versus valence. You can see in the top right hand corner, it tells you what it is, arousal valence. This is the VAD framework. This is dominance versus valence. 
and then dominance versus arousal. So you can imagine right there, there's a cube and you're taking from each side. I do have, I do have some things where it's like we go through the slices like this, and I'll, I'll show you those at some point, um, right? Because there's this big um, blob, and it got, it got a little carried away. But basically, you can just sort of march through it and sort of see how things change through this English muffin of, of meaning. Um, so this is the one we just, we've sort of looked at fairly strongly, right? So success is in that corner. Nothingness is here. Labeling's a little bit different because it's a, you know, a smaller scale, there's a different thing. So different words might be um, highlighted, but they're, they're the same ones. Uh, and you can see the SVD for each of these planes is off, right? That's reflective of those correlation coefficients. Doing SVD then and relabeling um, and, 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 sort of, and making these ozeograms again, this is the first dimension versus the second one, the first dimension versus the third one, and then the second dimension versus the third one. These are, you know, in terms of singular value, the one that's strongest. And you can see that this ellipse is oriented this way. Um, this ellipse is, you know, squeezed this way. It's got the third dimension uh, it is pointing up. And so what happens at this point is you like you start staring in this and say, which words are going, you know, which words are standing out, right? So you have to sit here and, and play with this and, and you know, for each of these, we have one big one. We can go back to those at some point as well. But you see, this is still kind of put success here and weak here, um, and then it's tranquil and so on. Hom but homicide and murder have moved up, right? So there's a different kind of shape to this because it is, you know, it, you know we, we are, we found, we've kind of rotated around and we found a different slice. Um, so there's definitely a good, bad kind of aspect to this way, like shitty shitload, right? Generous freedom, that's what's going on here. Chaos is up here. Um, and these are high energy things and low energy things. Now, these are just repeating labels, right? This could be valence and this could be arousal or activity. We're just gonna give them different names so that, you know, we, you know they, they're not overlapping with names, right? And of course, the one that was identified as valence here and scored by people you know, it's not the same as this one, right? It's not, we, we had to do SVD to, to get there. All right, I think um, I'm just gonna quickly tell you what, what happens is this third one took a lot of, so identifying them as good as good as energy and then structure is, is hard. We're gonna have to kind of think about this, but structure came out as sort of the most general term here. So there's like boss, stone, uh, diplomat, you know, these are of course people things, but stone is a good one there to give you a sense of something more general. Tickle, jiggling, um, or juggling perhaps, jest, nude is here, dancing. These are more, um, these are looser, messier things. And so early on, we had the idea of maybe this is play and this is serious. And in fact, for characters, that's, that's, uh, at least that's actually kind of what it is, playful, serious. Uh, and if you look at the goodness thing, so stuff that's kind of playful or or um, un this is unstructured are things like birthday, passionate, there's a hashtag for happy new year, awesome. Mor structured good is like morale and uh, reliable, confidence. Structured bad, funeral, opposed, dictator, sadly. And then structured, unstructured and bad is like jitters and jumpy and abused and nervous wreck, right? So this is... You could also call this like a predictability, right? I mean, you know, I think it does line up in that way. So this is like predictability. Like these are these are more reliable, predictable. You know what they are. Like, you know, although politics is in here as well. But this, I mean, I, you know, the word it's a it's a choice. Structure was sort of felt like the most general one. And if you look at that for uh, this is energy this way, so. Unstructured energy is like exhilarated, adrenaline, you know, it's explosive, low energy, but um, and unstructured. So this is playful, right? Is biscuit and teddy bear, like these are softer things. Uh, low energy and structured, are, you know, no emotion, trunk, stone, nothingness, uh, and, and high energy, but, but uh, and high structure, are like bus, dictator, warfare, right? So uh, they seem reasonable. And so, Looking at this, just looking at this, and this is sort of staying with this, you know, in this space, 
for a long time just sort of thought, well, what happens if we rotate this around? Like, what, what do we get? And that was really the, the game. It's like, okay, let's rotate this around and see if these are more interpretable. And so it's still the same game. So we've rotated around. There's really a kind of an ellipse here. But um, in terms of these dimensions now, this variance explained is, is, this, is equal. So kind of came up to see that this is more like we could call this power and call this danger. And so power could be a dominance thing. But danger was not in any of the conceptions we've seen before. It's in some of the semantic differentials that we used way back when, but it is not like in the VAD framework at, uh, overtly. So this this will turn out to be the big deal because um, danger is this way, safety is this way. So if we look down here, there's angel, peace, calmness, tranquil, calm. Right? These are very, this is all very safe. Chaos is up here. Homicide, murderer, assassinate. These are these are all danger things. Um, power out here, you know, went with power. So success is here, conquer, triumphant, empty, weak, nothingness. So, so that, that, that complete void, you know, this is void. This is, this is nothingness. And this has a feel to it that's pretty good, right? As you go around this, you know, you go from void and nothingness, you start to um, uh, uh, index up the, the danger and you get depressed, shitload, shitty, mistreated, and then it get, turns into really bad, so like murder is here. And then it becomes things like power. When, as we add more power, we get to war. That's, it's very dangerous here, but that turns into competitor, like volcano is in here, earthquake is in here, intensity, you know, victorious. This becomes more sort of like, you know, it's okay. And then as you go down a little bit into more safer stuff, you have prestige, generous, wisdom is here, happiness is here, confidence. And then you get back to angel and peace. And as you move around in between here, so this is safe and low, low power. So it's kind of weak, safe stuff, couch and cotton, tortoise. Those things are in here, um, slow and small. So these are, this is sort of a safe space. And so for characters, this is going to work out incredibly well. You know, this is where Homer Simpson is out here. You know, I know I've talked about this, but the chaos agents are out here. This is where the community characters are. Um, you know, Sauron, well, actually we don't have Sauron, but, you know, really the kind of the evil, like the Joker is here, the, the sort of bad characters. Um, but they're, they're not, the really dangerous people are kind of here, right? They're, 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 this is like dangerous winning. You know, they're very threatening. They're, they're real, they're more than competitors. You know, they will sort of kill you if that's the, that's the framework. Lex Luthor, yeah, these are, yeah, you know, it's like a lot of evil villains are interesting because they, they don't always, you know, like Voldemort, right, is here, doesn't, because they don't really win. They don't really win. But, the you know, truly in, in stories, right, but a lot of where they do, like Game of Thrones has, Game of Thrones are all in here, except for Samuel Turley, who's a angel type character, and then the one who gets hideously tortured. Um, uh, what's his name? Grey... Is it the gray, gray joy? What's his name? Theon Greyjoy. Yeah. So he he's he's. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to look at it when it comes up. But it's like he's not going to be as because uh, they they're in this. They might not be out, you know, quite as far out here. Like how many Granger is here? Yeah. McGonagall is here, and um, you know these, these are sort of dominant leader type people. But the chaos agents. This is the chaos agent. But these are your angels. These are these are the people who help you, and, and they're just good people. They sacrifice themselves. Um, and in the theory of human stupidity, this is going to be the stupid dimension. They harm themselves and others. And you know, the, the, we'll, we'll go through it. It's very important. Anyway, so this this is just a, at this point going through just as the way this kind of proceeded and the way it's laid out in the paper is. Oh, look, we could rotate this and this is interpretable. And this is, high, this is the high energy thing because we've rotated around. This is high energy. This is high goodness. But high energy is not easily sort of seen as power plus danger. And energy and, and, and like danger isn't, I mean, it's, it's sort of energy plus negativity. That's sort of reasonable. But these are feel like more primal axes. And the big reveal will be that, that we'll see that, in fact, there is a safety bias to language. It's not a positivity bias, which would be this way. It's a safety bias. So this is really fundamental to language. 
and it fits into the whole survival thing, right? This is this is this is where we what we talk about most of the time. We have very important words which you know talk tell us about bad things, um, but we don't use them all the time. And we would rather be in this space talking about the weather and the basketball and the whatever. Yeah. So Yes. What's the danger of the language? Right. That may tell you more about the level of concern. Right. So, happiness is um, safety plus power. Yeah. That's the deep, that's the, that unlocks, I I mean, to me, this is like, yeah. The search for happiness is not, it's really this. Um, So, uh, and we do, we have some work, uh, one of the students is doing, works, with the VA and, and has all this data on uh, uh, notes, on, on doctor's notes and so on, right? So nurse's notes. Doing the analysis, you have to be, you have to change things a little bit because of um, some words like positive and negative are literally the wrong thing, right? So you've got a positive um, result means you're, you know, you you have cancer versus ne- right. You know, the office has. Jo- I mean, there are jokes in TV shows about this. The rest of development, it's like, you know. People miss it, and it is. It's very different because it's you know real, really fundamental birds. You know where you know yes and no. It's like flipping yes and no around or something. It's, so they're very comfortable within a medical context. But someone says you know the results, you know the the test was negative. It's good. So you have to you have to accommodate that. That's another problem. But um, yeah, and if you think about sh- stories, right? This axis is elicited all the time. Danger, safety, danger, safety, danger, safety. And you, you'll see people say all the time, I just want to keep you safe. We're in danger, blah, 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 right. Um, what we'll really dig into is that, that danger is really a fantastic word for this. Safe, safe takes on a little bit of um, power as well. So it's a little bit drifted, but weak and powerful. Really good words for these things. And so instead of calling this and high energy, um, we will call this dangerous, powerful. Like just keep those things. And then, you know, this is like danger, danger, power. It's like North, Northeast. Um, and this is, uh, you know, dangerous, weak. And, th- and this is definitely, you know, these are the people who, these are the, the chaos agents, the loose cannons. This is things, this Chang is totally out of, this is things can just really go wrong for you. Um, you know, it's a powerful, safe or safe, powerful. And then safe, weak, you know, these, these are fun. And, you know, in terms of an organism looking at another organism, you could be an amoeba or a snake or whatever, you know, you make an assessment about your, you know, your relationship between them, between your, your environment, you know, there's a fire, that's danger, you know, then you r- respond, right? So, um, all right, so these are ouseograms, they're little meaning grams. Obviously, they could be more things. I, I, I know we've got to go. I'll add one more piece because we'll have to come back to it. But if you see, there's a histogram on the sides of these things, and gray. These color in gray is just from uh, the neutral point, right? And then the medians indicated by these little uh, black triangles. And what you see is when we unfold this thing, there's a safety bias here. This is just types, right? Each word gets one vote, so this is still not. You know, we can't really say too much about it, but no, but you actually see that distribution is pushed that way. Very symmetric here for structure, very symmetric here. Um, so that's something that's gonna come up as well. But that, just to note that there was that little, yeah, in various versions it was sticking on the outside and kind of snuck it on the inside, these little histograms. Okay, well, this is good. And just, we'll, we'll keep going through slowly next week. And I just want you to ask that every, Every question. It's good. So you could like score meetings.